Hello everybody. Today we're going to be going over a comprehensive guide as to what is the best bait in high pixel skyblock. To test we're going to go in alphabetical order and use a single stack from each single bait in the game. For consistency and reliability of the end results, I'm going to try to make everything I do as fair as I possibly can. One way we're going to make it as fair as possible is we're going to go to the same exact location for each spot here. And this location is right off the spawn, as you can see. The Blessed Bait has a 15% chance to get double drops from fishing. And for consistency, we're going to be using the same exact pet throughout the whole process, which is a blue whale pet, as it has no outcome on fishing speed, just helping out a little bit on potion heals health and defense. This will help show a base level since we're going to be showing a detailed table at the end of this video. So you can adjust your specific pet's modifying stats to what the table at the end shows. You'll likely use the squid, flying fish, or dolphin pet as it can help speed up the process or give you more XP as you fish. We are going to be speeding up the process throughout this whole video. I just want to point out I am using a Rod of Legends, and I just want to point out that is a fully maxed Enchanted Rod of Legends. Just some fun facts about the Blessed Bait. It is one of the most expensive baits to craft. It uses a block of gold, prismarine crystals, and raw fish. Next up is the Carrot Bait, which says it has a chance of catching up a rabbit. And in fact, this is the chance of catching up the Carrot King. Now this is one of the reasons why I always thought a video like this would help out so much since a lot of the bait has very opaque outcomes as to what it actually does. What are the actual chances of catching up the Carrot King? How good is it? We're going to be breaking this down at the end for you in detail. We're going to fast forward here to the first time we caught the Carrot King. This happens to be about 11 candies used. And there's definitely a lot of variability as to when you might get your first Carrot King. It could be on the first, but for me, it was on the 11th. Now, you might have the expectation of not catching one, but two Carrot Kings. Which I got about approximately 10 candies used later. So yeah, two Carrot Kings. Thirdly, there must be a third. And final, that's all you really got. So that means for every 64 bait you use, you might be able to expect 3 Carrot Kings, or a 3 out of 64 chance, which roughly translates to about a 5% chance. For the Carrot King drops, you might want to find a Lucky Clover Core, which can help you get a magic find on your pet. Or you might want to cast your 6 book, which has a chance of not consuming bait. And for some unknown reason, you might just want a rabbit hat, which can give you a jump boost 4, or you just sell it for the 10 coins it's worth at the auction house. For dark bait, that has a chance of catching sea creatures during the night, and is made by using raw fish combined with black ink or squid ink. Now, when you're using dark bait, odds are it's probably not dark out, it's light. So, you might just have to wait until nighttime if you're doing a video. But if you're a normal person, you might consider using a light bait during the day and dark bait at night. The dark bait might not be broken promises by Hypixel. You might fish out more mobs from the pond. So we are going to fast forward throughout some of these mobs that we've caught. And the dark bait pulled through and got a guardian pet. A common pet though. And when you begin to notice that it gets light outside, you gotta unfortunately take a break. But that's okay, because we'll just stash all the loot we collected so far and pick back up once it gets dark again. In the meantime, we are going to be going straight to the next one and see if we can do all of it before it gets dark again. So the fish bait has a 30% chance of catching up fish, so we'll see if this works out. I don't know if anyone can relate, but this was always a go-to fishing bait for me. It was one of the cheapest fishing baits. It requires two raw fish and a raw salmon. So it's extremely easy and cheap. And it had the highest quoted 
fishing speed speeding it up 30%, but we're going to be comparing this to see if it actually makes a difference in time, how much, and if it is good on the XP front or money front. And if you didn't forget, we were about halfway through the dark bait, and it is just about nighttime. It looks like the sun is just setting. So it's nighttime, and that ended up being actually quite a great timing using the fishing bait in between the dark bait. So we're going to be slowing it down here to show off a special occasion. So the dark bait came up with not one, but two pets, and the second pet is a dolphin pet. That's definitely a major win. If you could get a legendary version of that on the auction house, it could easily end up equaling all of the haul that you might get from selling your items. As you can see, this is quite a nice haul that we got from the dark bait. And besides the pets, we got a Spike Tuck 6, a Water Hydra Head, and a Fish Affinity Talisman. Now, next alphabetically is Ice Bait, which should have a 20% chance to catch winter sea creatures only at the Jerry Pond. But nonetheless, we are going to be checking it out and to see if it makes any difference. But I think it'll just act as a control group versus the other baits here. Okay, we're going to be tossing everything into the ice bait chest and moving on to light bait. For light bait, that will increase your chance to catch sea creatures during the day. But what does it actually increase your chances? What does it compare to the other baits? This is one of the questions we are going to be answering. Should you actually be using this? So light bait is crafted using two prismarine crystals and a raw fish. And to fully use a stack of light bait, this is going to take more than one day cycle, but less than two. We're going to keep charging towards the end of this process here. Besides some of the loot you can see on your screen, we were able to get a Frail 6 book and an Angler 6 book. Next up is going to be the Minnow Bait, which gives a 15% faster catch time. Now the Minnow Bait is something that I never really bothered with. With a 15% faster catch rate, it was easily worse than the supposed 30% faster catch rate in the fish bait. And the recipes were almost identical, except the fish bait just takes one piece of raw salmon, which is very easy and always seemed extremely worthwhile to me to get the fish bait or the minnow bait. Now next up is the spike bait, which has a 6% higher chance to catch a sea creature, and finally a bait with a number attached to it. Now, the spike bait's 6% chance to catch a sea creature happens to also equal the base catch rate of the Rod of Legends of 6%. So one of the best fishing rods in the game happens to give you the same sea creature chance rate that this bait does. One of the things that's quite nice with a spike bait is that there are no restrictions on fishing during the day or night time and as you can see that is the loot from the spiked bait. And next up we're going to move straight on to the spooky bait. The spooky bait is going to scare off any sea creatures that you might otherwise would have caught. So one of the things I think this will help out with is the amount of time it takes for you to fish up anything as you won't have to deal with any monsters and if you are potentially a newer player you're not going to have to battle anything that might potentially kill you and we are going to be keep on chugging towards the end of the spooky bait process and for anyone that has fished a good amount you'll have noticed that when you catch a sea creature it gives you a lot of xp and it gives you a lot of loot and as you can see with a spooky bait we have substantially less than we normally had in our other runs. Okay, we're going to be moving on to the whale bait. The whale bait is supposed to be the best bait in the game. It's the most expensive to craft. And what it does is it has a small chance to get double drops from items fished, a higher chance to catch rare sea creatures, and a 20% faster catch rate. Part of the reason being that it has so many stats attached to it 
is it takes a fish bait to craft, a light bait, a dark bait, and a blessed bait. So as you can imagine, it is the most expensive bait to craft, maybe somewhere potentially in the range of 500 or more coins. But it's also the most timely to craft as I've progressed throughout the game and got more serious about leveling up my fishing skill. I definitely started going for the whale bait. I thought it was definitely the best. But in this video, we're going to be going in the specifics of how good it actually is since a lot of those stats are quite opaque. For example, it just says a higher chance to get sea creatures. But what does it actually translate to? Now we're going to be sticking our haul from our whale bait fishing expedition into the chest. Now in order to summarize all of these baits in terms of the money that you could get from each one of them, we're going to be taking all of their loot going immediately to the bazaar one after the other. We are going to be using the sell now feature, but we aren't actually going to sell it just marking down that price of 56,305 coins. And then we're going to be repeating this process for each one of these. We aren't selling it so that we aren't affecting the market prices and we're doing this all at once so that the market prices aren't changing significantly or at all on us. I think everyone gets a point. So we are going to be having a quick summary going through each one of the chests semi-sorted here so you could get a picture of the end results in comparison to each other in terms of the actual materials that we got for each one of these. Now I do want to point out we are going to be pulling up a table quite soon in addition to summarizing all of the bizarre sell now prices we took the liberty to take anything that couldn't be sold at the bazaar but sold to an NPC and calculated those prices. In addition, we tried to take the market prices of anything that couldn't be sold at any at either of those or that it made sense to sell at the auction house, such as a green experience bottle, and we summarized it there. I do want to point out something semi-notable here since we did catch a dolphin pet. Dolphin pets can have a price that could be insanely high, you might need to increase its rarity from cat. Okay, enough chat on how we did it. We're going to show you the results now. So, in the left hand column, we have a time it takes in minutes for each one of these baits to go through a stack of bait. The fastest baits were the fish bait at number one and the spooky bait at number two. The fish bait coming in at number one wasn't all too surprising for me since it does have the highest specified catch rate. However, I think spooky bait coming in at number two on the fastest catch rate does start telling a story. It scares off any sea creatures. So when you start looking at the table, you'll recognize all of the baits that attract sea creatures will have a higher time it takes to go through a stack of fish. Now, let's talk a little bit more about money. So in column D, we have the bizarre sell now prices. In column E, we have the NPC value of any items that we couldn't sell. That's stuff like music discs and a sea lantern. In column F, we have something there for people who notice they got a dolphin pet or a grand experience potion. And they're like, who in their right mind would sell that at the NPC? It's best to stick it on the auction house. So we try to capture some of that value in the auction house column. Column G summarizes just the NPC and the bizarre values. And column H includes everything such as the auction house. I want to have all these columns so that you can help decide what's the most important metric. I personally think the NPC and bizarre are going to be pretty fair ways to help look at these numbers you definitely are going to have variability in fishing and having some more freak accidents like getting a dolphin or a guardian such as we got in the dark bait might not be too replicable for other people so I think the NPC and Bazaar are going to be more of a common metric that you can look at for consistency. So the winner in the money column for me 
is the spiked bait. The spiked bait comes in at 96,736 coins if you were to sell everything to the bazaar and the NPC. And remember, the thing that's really nice about the spike bait, it's simple to craft. It takes a raw fish and a puffer fish, two very easy items to get. The number two spot to me that just trailed was a dark bait. Comes in at 92,000 coins. But if you were including some of the very rare drops like we got, like the dolphin pet, the guardian pet, the water hydra head, that we got using the dark bait and you believe the dark bait is definitely going to get you something similar in terms of results the dark bait would be the clear winner on the money front now that we've talked a little bit about money and a little bit about time we're going to be talking about them together that's right how many coins can you get per minute or per hour and i'm going to say that it's been a tie for number one with the spiked bait and dark bait coming in both at approximately 384,000 coins per hour figure. And let's start focusing a little bit more on the losers because I think it becomes quite clear on the money front. So the bottom three finishers were fish bait and minnow bait. Those prioritize speed. So in terms of collecting money, and collecting money even on an hourly figure, speed is not where you want to go. I would not use fish bait or minnow bait if you are trying to maximize money. As you can see, you could easily collect 100,000 coins less per hour or about even half of the figure that you could have got at dark or using the spiked bait. And all the way in a clear last position was spooky bait. That scares off any sea creatures at all. That's a major source of items, and having a lack of those items was a complete waste, even though the spooky bait was one of the fastest ways you could have gone through a stack of bait. It's clearly the worst on a coins per hour basis. For reference, it's that 12,400 coins that spooky bait has. That's about 3% of what you could have gotten in an hour if you used spiked bait. These are major differences. Now what about the person that's not fishing for the money, that's just there for the XP and leveling up the fishing skill? Well I got you covered, because I summed up all of the XP in column I. However, I would recommend you look at column J and K, which is how much XP per minute or per hour you could get if you were to fish using each one of these baits. And that to me is the most important metric is because if you were to spend an hour, what bait would you want to use to maximize the XP that you received? In first place and close to second place, you have dark bait and spiked bait coming in at one and two. Finally, you have the whale bait coming in at least reasonably close in terms of these metrics, comes in at number three. And remember, this is the most expensive bait to craft, most time consuming to craft bait. I thought it would have been the clear standout winner. I was surprised to learn that it was just pretty mediocre of a bait. Wait, was this guy gonna tell me whale bait wasn't so great and he just tested one stack of this? Fishing's kind of variable. So I did this another three times. I had a bit of a hard time believing this. This is something that I always strived for when I was fishing. I thought it was the best. But after using this another three times, I got about the same results as I did the first time. It just wasn't all that worthwhile to use, especially for how much it costs to craft and the time and effort it takes to collect all of those baits used I redid light bait and I did get a bit better of a result. I got 108,000 coins versus the 86,000 coins that I got. To conclude things in a short and simple message, I think you've got to use all of the bait that tries to get you sea creatures. Avoid anything that promises speed. It's just not worth it in terms of XP or even money. 
My go-to bait after using this is the spiked bait. I think it's easy to craft and it'll get you the best results without having to wait for a day or night cycle like the light bait or the dark bait which is always a bit of a pain to have to wait around or to switch baits. Whew, is that a lot of fishing? I guess I should have also shown the ice bait actually in the ice pond for you guys. Showing it just by itself as control group, I think might help you out a little bit in that table to compare things. But we are going to test it out in the jerry pond, see if it's worthwhile. Before I fast forward too much throughout the jerry pond, I did want to show you this because I think it's a pretty good indication. You guys, I'm sure have had this happen, a snowman attack you. I think this is one of the biggest things that will affect the results in the final, final table I'm going to show you guys with a Jerry Pond result. And here it is, the final result of using the ice bait in the Jerry Pond. To summarize it quickly, it wasn't worth it. It wasn't worth it in terms of money per hour. It wasn't worth it in terms of XP per hour you can get. One of the main reasons I think make the Jerry Pond not so great for fishing normally is the fact that snowmen will pop up and other mobs and will knock you back, prevent you from killing them. That's a huge time suck. As you can see, it took me 21 minutes to use a full stack. That is by far the most amount of time I spent. To give the Jerry Pond a little bit of credit, I think some guys are using this to get the Yeti pet, which would net them a huge amount of money. I have seen some videos on it. It definitely seems like it would take you forever to get the Yeti pet. I would totally keep this in mind since there might be a 300,000 coin per hour difference in fishing at the Jerry Pond normally if you are not to strike it rich with one of these super rare items. I hope you all enjoyed this and found it useful. I try to make it as fair and accurate as I possibly can and broke it down in detail for you guys. Since I know in Hypixel there's so much grinding involved, I hoped a video like this would help out everyone a huge amount. I know I'm changing the way I'm using my bait. I think I'm totally going to go for spiked bait and avoid spooky at all costs.